Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Earlier last week, I shared my Golden Frieza list that I'm pretty much going to be playing for the rest of this format on the Patreon. And I wanted to share with you guys here on the YouTube channel now, so we're going to go over that in today's video. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And if you guys want to buy any cards for this deck or any trading cards for that matter, it does really help me out if you use my link in the description to TCG Player. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Anyways, let's jump right on into this. Leader is simple simple enough what i will say about the leader is you know in this format one thing that could be a slight problem is getting awakened we cover that in the main deck so we'll talk about that as well as the z deck but still important to know you know we're one of the very few leaders that doesn't have a um, guaranteed awakening condition like most of the you know zenkai block leaders or even slightly before zenkai block the other thing too is you want to try your best to use your leaders activate main on both sides the turn that you do awaken for maximum draw but don't get super greedy. If you're being aggroed down, don't stay on your unawakened side just to try and pull that off because you'll take way too much damage and probably fall way too far behind anyway. So, you know, when it's safe to do so, definitely try to get that activate man on both sides. But when you're getting aggroed, definitely just awaken, draw your two for, for more defense. But anyways, let's get on into the main board here. So we have four copies of the Higher Dragon Unison and four copies of SS2 Gohan Z Fighter. This is our main form of pressure. This is pretty much the reason why I like this deck so much because it's not nearly as passive as Trunks Vegeta, which I feel like a lot of times does struggle to put out threats. It's not quite as aggro as Majin Vegeta, so I think it's uh, that Golden just sits right in the perfect kind of mid-range spot, right? Now, this is a lot of unisons. We also play a lot of extra cards as Yellow normally does and even more so in Golden Frieza. So do we have a problem comboing? Sometimes you gotta definitely charge intelligently, you know, charge extra copies of unisons, but at the same time, you might need extra unisons in your hand for uh, either different matchups that can clear unisons easily, or just for the classic like Gohan into Gohan and maybe even into a third Gohan in the same turn play. You gotta know when to go for that, so this deck definitely takes quite a bit of practice. And you could maybe go to three Gohans if you really wanted to, but I tell you that triple Gohan in one turn play does come up sometimes, and I want to make sure I'm able to do it. Even the double Gohan in one turn, uh, you want to kind of have four copies to make that as consistent as possible. And then again, like I said, just charge intelligently, make sure you don't leave your hand full of clunk, and you should be okay. Then we have four Frieza Call. Of course, this is like that one extra, extra card that we have to play because we are Golden Frieza, but it's just so good that you don't really mind playing it. We have four copies of Ginyu and four copies of Tagoma. In this deck, these giant paragraphs of text, you can just completely ignore them. All we need is just the on-play draw card. That's all we need from these two cards. We have four copies of Mecha Freezer, Robotic Repose, and three copies of SS Vegito Overwhelming Might. This new addition to the yellow is just incredible. Basically allows us to play around Broly Crown. As well as interacting with the Gogeta A drop triumphant together. You can counterplay this card in response to that card being played. And while it's unaffected by all non Gogeta effects, this puts a cost on the player to have to tap a card in order to attack. So a lot of times it ends up saving your board from uh, being attacked because they just won't have enough things to tap on their own side of the field to wipe your entire board. And if Gogeta is only swinging at your leader, and you have the appropriate means to defend it, and you still have your entire board going into the following turn, you're going to be able to put so much pressure on them. You might force them to Z-Awaken, and a lot of times against Gogeta, if you force a Z-Awaken, you kind of just snowball into the victory. We have our one power of the Super Saiyan. Of course, we're just going to play the one copy we're allowed to play. Three copies of Frieza Army Reinforcements. This card is very important in certain matchups, and I do a lot of times keep this in my opening hand. So, ideally... A situation I like to find myself in is, let's say, like, turn two, turn three, being at five life, playing my Gohan Higher Dragon Unison, and then, you know, getting my value off that via the plus one, and then going into my opponent's turn with Frieza Army ready to go, so I can get Awakened, so I can defend my Unison, and go into my next turn, bring my one drop back, pop it off, do whatever I have to do, play Gohan, Awaken, uh, the SS2 Gohan, rather. And, and go from there, right? So you can see how the freeze army reinforcements can be very important for awakening. And uh, it's also the, it also makes it safe to play your unison because if you ever play higher dragon out there without any form of defense, it's certainly gonna die. It's a one cost 5k unison that only gains one marker per turn. So you gotta make sure if you're gonna leave it out there for an entire turn, you gotta have the appropriate defenses. Typically like it's gonna take a freeze army reinforcements and a repost typically to, to protect that thing, but it is definitely doable. 
The one copy of Cold Bloodlust. This card is so good in the right scenario. Sometimes you just side it out, but it's great against Gohan Beast. It's great against Cooler SCR in the Mirror Match. It's great against SS4 Vegeta, the Super Warrior in the Blue Ramp matchup. It's good against so many things. Uh, and it's good against Floodgates. Like this is another copy of Tyrannical Blow when you need it. This is another copy of Death Blaster when you need it because obviously it just hits anything. It doesn't care about cost. So yeah, incredible, incredible card. We have one copy of Vegeta's Final Flash. So Final Flash is interesting. Some people don't play it at all. Some people play multiple. Some people play one just to keep the opponent honest. That's kind of the route that I'm going is just play the one to keep the opponent honest. But also, it's pretty good in the Android 21 matchup because it's an activate battle, so it doesn't interact with the A drop in terms of forcing you to discard two cards when you counter. It also combos out of the A drop if they don't combo into it. And they don't get to untap five at the end of that turn. So if they decide that it's a safe turn to tap out for the eight drop, or you know they think they'll get five energy back, you final flash, get out of that attack, and then bam, they're tapped out now. You can probably apply a ton of pressure the next turn if they really mess up in that regard. I'd probably side a second copy of this for the 21 matchup, as well as two copies of Trunks the Cunning, just to sure that matchup up. Then we have one copy of Frieza, Malicious Streak. This is playable off Frieza Call, so it is one of our self-awakening components, very, very important. And we have four copies of Master Roshi, Martial Melee. Now, you don't need four of this in every single matchup. You'll definitely side this out a fair bit, especially against the red decks. Even, like, blue eaters that have to attack to draw. I'll side out one, maybe two copies of this just to um, put in some other things. But I figure with, you know, most of the format being sideware, best of one, I would just start with four of this in my deck. And then, you know, side out as needed, bring in other cards. Uh, and that's worked out pretty well for me. Then we have two copies of Frieza Divine Transformation. Pretty much your win condition against blue decks. Like, blue just cannot get this thing off the board. So once you stick it, they can't counter anymore. And now you're just applying tons of pressure with this and your unison package. Super, super good. Two copies of Cooler against Red. Definitely side one out. It's not really that great against Red. Also, if you happen to play against any flood, or sorry, combo power heavy blue decks like Crimson used to be. You also don't really need Swift Taliation Cooler, but it is good against like the Floodgate Blue Decks, like mostly the Android Blue Decks. Three copies of Sin Shenron Cold Hearted Shadow Dragon, yet another card that helps us play around Broly Crown, uh, helps us in the aggro matchup, helps us in all matchups really, because uh, it just shuts down certain boss monsters. And then we have two copies of the Sin Shenron Destruction Incarnate. Super cool that you can evolve this over the four drop champ pack promo and play it in any deck. Uh, I do like Sin for the fact that on de on death, it also draws us two cards. But this is a card that I, I would also side out a fair amount. Let me talk about where I think the 9-drop Sin is really good. I think the 9-drop Sin is really strong, specifically against SS4 Gogeta. Because every time they use an ability to play one of their Gokus or Vegetas that draw when comboed, you can negate that card's skills, and now they're losing on an entire draw per uh, action, right? So that's really good. Being 30k, they have to string together multiple minuses in order to get this thing off the board. And you would think that Rush Attack Vegeta can just kill this thing on its own because typically that card swings twice and minuses 30 total, but it'll get its effects negated into Sin Shenron Destruction Incarnate. So they really have to kind of jump through hoops in order to get enough minuses to get this thing off the board. So I do like it for that. I would definitely side it out against uh, blue because there's not much in blue you're actually going to successfully negate the skills of that the four drop sin doesn't already deal with well and not having barrier on the nine drop definitely makes it a lot easier to kill in the blue matchup i know you draw two and it dies but in some cases you'd rather have the four drop stick around rather than invest all that energy into the nine drop just for it to die and draw two you want the board presence in some matchups like the blue matchup for example but in the red matchup where it's harder for them to kill it you can play a nine drop and then in some yellow matchups the nine drop is also really good as long as you keep it in active mode because again they'll have to jump through hoops to rest it and then pop it as where if you swing with it that you're kind of giving them the opportunity to pop it anyway right so it's all about learning the matchups and filling it out in that regard but the card's really really good two copies of secret enemy mass sand this this deck fuels a drop area like no other so two overrealm feels really good plus there are a lot of silver bullets that screw over golden so we have like bms we have the untapping uh, silver bullet those kind of things and having secret id to just mass wipe them is super super good three copies of krillin super combo that means we are playing piccolo gohan newfound might now you might be asking me why am i not playing golden cooler scr that's because of the mirror match uh golden frieza is finally a tier one deck um and you know for the longest time it was a really solid rogue deck 
But now that the deck is more on the map, you do have to worry about the mirror match. And Golden Cooler is unfortunately just a little bit weak into the mirror match, mostly because of Cold, Bloodlust, and Death Blaster, of which I would side one extra copy. Definitely side two copies of T-Blow, which is not currently in my main deck, just some side deck tips for you guys. But yeah, because Golden Cooler is such a weaker card in the mirror, and really against any yellow deck that can potentially be playing Death Blaster, I'm going for the uh, Piccolo Go on here. And this helps in the red matchup as well. Like if you go second against red, yes, you can sometimes stall out all the way until Golden Cooler. But if they're being really aggro with you and you draw an unfortunate hand, uh, having this SCR versus having Golden Cooler in your hand is gonna make a huge difference. So I do like this SCR choice for all those reasons. And then we have the one Bergamo, which um, you know just wins games if your opponent plays into it. Not too much to say about that. Then we go into our Z deck, We're playing one copy of Surmounting. I personally don't like two copies of Surmounting in this deck because a good player is going to leave your one Surmounting on the board and not remove it because Surmounting has unique. So if they ever do kill your first Surmounting, then you're open to playing the second one. And any good player knows that they just shouldn't kill your Surmounting. The one scenario where Surmounting is good, or sorry, the second copy of Surmounting is good, is when your opponent is able to counterplay the first one, which does come up in some scenarios, like Gamma can do it if you go second, and uh, Yellow Dex playing T-Blow and Blue Dex playing Death Storm Measures can do it. But depending on how early in the game you play this and, and what deck you're facing, them leaving the one energy open for Death Storm Measures or T-Blow or whatever it is, is not gonna fit into their curve. So it doesn't come up enough for me to wanna play the second surmounting. But that's my logic and my reasoning and my explanation as to why you should or should not play the second surmounting. Then we have one copy of Oolong. This card comes up way less than it used to, although it is better in this version of the deck with Piccolo Gohan SCR rather than Golden Cooler. But yeah, it still doesn't come up all that much, but still worth it just for the final 40k shot. Two copies of SSB Goku of All Defender. This card is insane in this deck because of all the energy you get to play with. And uh, specifically, this typically ends up shutting down certain blue leaders. Uh, like Soul Striker or any leader that has an insane on attacking effect. Really, really good. And then we have two copies of S3 Vegeta, Terrifying Agent of Destruction. The fact that we have barrier removal that doesn't care about active mode uh, or rest mode is so, so good. This leads me to, uh, to tell you guys, definitely sideboard two Smoke Dragons for sure, just for the versatility of removing barrier cards or drawing two or uh, whatever you need Smoke to do in that scenario. Um, so I've I told you about half the side deck at this point already. Uh, sorry, I didn't prepare a side deck for this video, but there's so many different things you can side depending on your local meta or, you know, the regional coming up, whatever you're playing for. So, yeah, but this card, so, so good. And then we have one copy of Gamma 2 Executing Justice. Funnily enough, this came up for me as a one-drop 10k attacker when I needed it to be, so that worked out well. But yeah, this is just for any matchup that has a ton of floodgates, like, mostly blue. If you play against, like, Blue Baby, which is super rare, or Hatchiac, which is also pretty rare, but even the blue Android decks, like Gamma especially, some builds 21, this can pick up a lot of value. But anyways, guys, that is my deck list in its entirety, a 54 card main deck and Z deck. I know I don't have a side deck yet, but like I said, I mentioned a bunch of side deck cards you should definitely be considering. Uh, and then, you know, you guys can fill in the rest. I trust, I trust your guys' judgment. If you have any questions on what cards you should side deck, drop them down below. I'll let you know my thoughts on them. And uh, yeah, we'll get discussion going like that. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.